I I close it uh, to. Okay, we need to start again. Oh, this is bummer. It was amazing. Do you want me to start as Barbie or Pastor Ratchet? Because I'm Pastor Ratchet right now. No, I'm interviewing Barbie. Barbie. Okay, let's okay. take this shit off. Okay, then, okay. I am Barbie right now. Okay, folks, you miss out a uh, lot of things. We 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 talked, but uh, I forgot to record it. So I want to introduce. This is Barbie. I want to let you know she's insanely funny. As soon as I see her comedy, I was like, I I told him, uh, Basha, my assistant, I was like, put this bitch on as often as possible. Whatever she wants, put it on, okay? I just want to see her. I want to see her. But, uh, but I just as I told her, uh, in How I Met Your Mother, uh, which is a very famous uh, American TV show, uh, aired for like almost ten seasons. Uh, but of course, Bobby didn't watch it because no black people watch that show. Okay, I my own fucking world uh, too. <laughs> yeah, and then then in the show they have a theory. They say there's a graph of of women. It's like basically the more the hotter you are, the more uh tolerated uh of your craziness. So uh, if you are ugly. You need to behave, but if you are really, really hot, you can do insane shit. And Barbara is on the top of the graph, like she is fucking insane. But I tolerate her and I accommodate her. You know, I'm working extra shift to interview her now because I love her comedy. That's how how crazily funny she is. But she's bad shit crazy. And let me tell you what happened. What happened is the first time I met her. She showed up at the great、uh, Black Widows at the nine thirty-five. She asked me if she can take a bite. I said, "Yes,、yeah, sure. Go grab something. Come back at ten fifteen." And、uh, then she didn't come back at ten fifteen. She came back at ten twenty. I was so nervous because、uh, I don't have a comedian to come on stage. And、uh, and then finally she came. And.、Uh, Turns out she's insanely funny on stage. Like、uh, I was like, as soon as I saw it, I was like, oh, book her, book her, I love her. She's so funny. I want to see more of her. And then、uh, my assistant booked her yesterday to come to my Black Widow again, and she just assumed. That the first night I allow her to go eat and come back later, she just assumed she has a, that pri- privilege again. <laughs> I was like, "Bitch, you had that privilege because you showed up. You told me you are going to come back, but you can't just not show up and go eat and not tell me. How would I know if you come or not? And I was on stage, and uh, and uh, I, I, there's no comedian coming. The show is like, I, if I don't have anyone to introduce, I have to end the show. And I was just anxious as fuck. And then finally she came up with a like a fun uh, like a uh, nice dress uh, and uh, and she only、uh, showed up on time because Sophia May went upstairs to drag her ass down. Otherwise she enjoy her dinner.、Nice. Uh, and、uh, and she showed up. She showed up and、uh, she went on stage. <laughs> she was throwing dildo to come to audience and ask everyone to say the N word in unison. And at the end, she's like, "Oh, how many minutes I have? I was a bitch five minutes ago. You should end it." <laughs> But I was so scared. She's scary. I was just not able to. I didn't dare to say anything. But、um, uh, tomorrow is her last day. She wants to do the podcast with me. And I told my assistant Basha, I said, "You know what? She's fucking insane. But she's also <laughs> so funny." So I'm like. Whatever she wants, I do it. So now I'm working extra shift to interview Bobby. That's how funny she is. Yay! Okay, <laughs> now the truth about the last couple of nights. Okay, yes, I arrived at the show. <laughs> I did my set. The next night, I came back. I thought I had the same grace. I didn't know where I was in the lineup. I was all. I'm always fucking. Oh, she showed、night. up. She's like, I'm. I'm drunk. <laughs> I was enjoying <laughs> one of the best riojas I've ever had, and I started my set like, "Oh my god, this was a great wine!" And everyone's like, "Bitch, you're late. Can you get to the jokes?" <laughs> <laughs> also, because the bitches before you was really not so funny. Oh, okay. Well, I'm sorry. I stressed you out. I didn't know Moni. And Moni and I, like, I'm just meeting her. I saw her ad, and I thought, I want. When I saw the name of the show, I'm like, "That's me. Yeah, that is me." Dang. Isn't it because you're black? 
No, it was like the, the content of uh, my shit. Was are you just like, like double so black? Dull. I'm double black. Yeah, I'm double black. Uh, <laughs> I was like, damn, get on the flow. Uh, that's that's me. So uh, I was like all over it. Uh-huh. I, sadly enough, I'm leaving tomorrow. Sad, sad. But I had a three day run, y'all. I was past the ratchet. Hallelujah. <laughs> And she was up in this bitch. Sadly enough, I didn't have enough time to prepare. Like, I just fucking, like, got a venue, like, Thursday last week. And so... I told you she's a crazy bitch. Yeah, I was just like, fuck, I'm going for it. Shit, I'm in Europe. I'm close enough. So I'm going to see what this fucking shit is all about. Uh, I didn't even know about the French until, like, second week of July. I'd never heard of it. And you are here. Yes. I told you she's a crazy bitch. <laughs> she makes fast decisions. And I like her. Fucking like her. But she's insane. Okay. So she's talking about this whole dildo carrying thing. I, you guys, here it is right here. I got my prompts. Okay. So I, you guys, I clean up the street. I am the CEO and founder. There it is of the Wounded Niggas in the Hood Project. <laughs> I love it. Bop, bop, bop. Antennas, dildo antennas. Tune in, tune in. Where's the rogue dick? They're somewhere around here. They're always around. <laughs> so Moni got such a fucking huge kick out of me pulling out my dildos. That's what I do, Moni. I clean up the fucking streets, you know? Mm-hmm. If a motherfucker pull a dick on you, mm-hmm. you got every right to pull a dick yeah. on him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so after all my cat calling experiences, I asked myself, Wait a minute, nobody's stopping these guys from pulling their dicks, so why can't I pull mine? So now I carry dildos. <laughs> I love your minds and you you are my bitch. You are my bitch. Um so I question, how old are you? I'm old as fuck. Next what? question. Mm, I still want to know how old are you? <laughs> I'm old as fuck. Next question. Are you past 40? 40? Yes. Uh-huh. Next question. I'm afraid this shit. <laughs> you, you, because I don't know, you see, it's like, are we, you don't need to know. You don't are need we to know. in the same generation? We like, are not. We're not? We're not. But can I treat you as a black sister? Yes. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh-huh. yeah. So, sister in the faith. Uh, uh, as I was talking with the previous comedian in the podcast, uh, Maria, super, super funny woman. I told her, like, every time when I see, like, really, really, like, a, a talented, dark, like, this kind of wild female comedian, I just fear this sisterhood. Like, I just fear. We, we met twice, but I just fear I love you so much. I want to get to know you, yes. uh, no matter how insane you are. Uh, <laughs> I, feel, I feel you are my people. You are my, yeah. I feel it, too. And, like, when I was looking for stand-up mm-hmm. gigs for the French, I'm looking through all the ads. Uh, then I saw yours. It's just, like, there's no coincidence. Mm-hmm. Like, I always, like, okay, energy led me to you. Uh-huh. I love that you're honest on stage. Uh-huh. I love that you're fucking authentic. Uh-huh. You don't bite your tongue. And that's how I am, too. So I want to be in that same shall, company. Shall we sit on each other's face now? Uh, uh, they gotta pay for that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's not free, boo boo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That is not free. Yeah. So, uh, next question. Let's see. How, how long have you been doing comedy? A year. Yeah, I've been doing it a year. Can I tell you, it's coming from such a place of these things have happened to me, so it's easy. I never have to sit down and write down anything because I have all of this pent up frustration from being harassed in the street for years. That is just like waiting to come out. And I think that that's the win at my back. Like I should have been talking about this shit years ago. But but the, what do you do for a living? I do uh, food tours in Miami. So you do nothing about the writing? Mm-mm. And you just got into comedy a Last year. year was my first summer like okay so let me tell let me tell you this i did two open mics in may of 2023 right i came to spain in june and then i just found all of this english open mic night and i was like oh my god this has always been here because i've been coming to spain for the past past three and a half years Uh but i wasn't doing comedy so i wasn't interested Uh and then i started doing comedy i'm like oh my god where are my peeps i want to get on stage Uh so after two open mics in miami i fucking took the stage in europe had Uh a great time spreading my message and i thought Uh i love this shit okay so uh wow I, I I really thought you've been doing this for, for a decade or something. I've been being harassed for decades, uh-huh. but I haven't been talking about it. <laughs> Bobby, I think you might be a comedy genius. I love it. Prodigy! Really, really. Yeah. Like it, 
the you crazier have... you are, maybe. I'm just living authentically, yeah. and that's all. That's how I feel. Like I'm wow. living authentic, and I'm happy with what I'm doing, and I, and I hope it, you know, I convey that when I'm on stage. Wow, that this is fucking insane because I'm six years in this thing, and the way you showed up, I really thought uh, like uh, you are a uh, like uh, you are. Uh, experienced comedian who i have to look up to i thought you have a decades of experience you are so funny do you think you do you think it's because you are a comedy genius or because you are a black woman i think that black women go through a lot black people people of color in general yeah we go through a lot and we have a lot of pent up uh frustrations yeah. and i think that i have decided to use comedy as a way to heal myself uh -huh. and release those frustrations uh -huh. i don't feel like i'm a genius mm -hmm. i think a lot of people have shit to say. Uh -huh. I think sometimes we're afraid to say it. We don't uh -huh. know how we want to come across. Uh -huh. We don't think anyone's going to listen. Okay. okay. But I fucking don't think I'm a genius. I just feel like I'm finally freeing myself. Okay. And it feels fucking awesome. Bobby, I'm your, your biggest fan. Like I, I, I love your comedy. I love your comedy, really. So... Uh, back to the topic is uh, is mental health uh, podcast. Yes. Uh, what are you experience? What's your challenge? Okay, so I actually started comedy because I needed a medium to move my energy mm -hmm. and move energy unfairly projected onto me. Mm -hmm. And then once I started doing my shows. I always had like two or three women after the show uh -huh. talking about, oh my God, mm -hmm. I was harassed too. Thanks for talking about mm -hmm. it. I never told anybody or uh -huh. I'm still holding the energy. Uh -huh. And so that really pushed me like, oh, other women need to be witnessed. Mm -hmm. This is a mental health thing. Yeah. Like you can only suppress this shit for so long. Uh, you got to fucking yeah. let it go at some point. So I'm feeling like my comedy hopefully is helping other people to deal with, um, pent up frustration uh -huh. because being witness is a powerful catalyst to healing mm -hmm. and so i i feel like that with the shit that i'm saying encouraging other women to tell their stories mm -hmm. me telling my stories mm -hmm. it's a great step towards like mental well-being yeah so besides uh, that's exactly true to just there are lots of things like uh, when we don't talk about it we suffer in secret individually and uh, when we start to start initiate the conversation we start to hear yeah yes. and uh but uh uh this is a joke folks uh, it's a joke what i'm going to say don't get mad at me um but i feel quite good that you suffered from the cat calling because uh i thought it's only ugly bitches have issues <laughs> now i realize hot bitches have issues i'm like life is fair Everybody's got fucking issues. And uh, when you talk about not moving energy, when you say it's bad not to talk about it, uh -huh. I don't know how much you know about psychosomatic illness. When like your psyche affects your soma, so your mental health affects your physical muscle yeah, tissue, yeah, yeah, and yeah. you can get disease. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, I mean, you got to fucking move that. You can't just store it. If you can't just store it, you get overwhelmed. Uh -huh. So my mission is to say, okay, you, you had a dick pulled on you? Uh -huh. Tell somebody. Okay. I'm gonna have a, 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 a hotline too uh -huh. for wounded niggas in the hood project. Uh -huh. That's my <laughs> that's my um organization, y'all. I'm the CEO and founder of the Wounded Niggas in the Hood Project. Uh -huh. And yes, I use the N word. I don't give a fuck. I think everybody should say it. We should scream it from the mountaintops. But at Wounded Niggas in the Hood, we help niggas mm -hmm. process process their trauma mm -hmm. so they're better able to keep their private parts private and public and uh -huh. refrain from other types of street harassment. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Bobby, uh, where are you based? In Miami, Florida, in the States. Okay, so uh, if I go to Miami with you... Boo boo, you're mm. gonna be so fucking hooked up. Yeah, uh, yeah. The, <laughs> another question is, uh, do you fuck white penis or only black penis? Both. I don't okay. discriminate. Which one you prefer more? Have you, do, do you fuck Asian penis? I've never had an Asian penis. Okay, okay. Um, I'm, I don't think, I think I had one Asian guy to step to me. Mm -hmm. And I didn't even know what the fuck, what the fuck to do. It took me like three days to understand that he was flirting with me. Because uh -huh. it's just not, yeah, <laughs> I just yeah, never yeah, had yeah, one. Yeah, yeah. Am I open to Asian penis? Sure. Uh -huh. But I do have a boyfriend right now. Okay. I love the spirit. Uh-huh. And, and the spirit that's attached to a big cock. But anyway. Uh -huh. And uh, another question <laughs> is. Do you prefer, do you think, uh, do you have a preference between white and the black penis? 
No, I don't. You I don't? don't. But I do have these two dildos that I carry. So they both representative. You should get a <laughs> get a get a yellow one also. So like a, we we exactly. are all on the same page. The middle okay. of this. But let me tell you, everybody, the white guys in the show when they ever uh -huh. see this, uh -huh. they always say, "Well, why is the white one?" You know, smaller than the black one. I'm like, that's a question for God. Uh -huh. That's not a question for me. Okay, uh -huh. it, they just. Uh -huh. I don't uh, even know why. Okay, and then with the uh, black penis, uh, it's uh, it's sometimes it's just too big and intimidating. Yeah, I've had I've had one that wouldn't even go in, and yeah. I was just like, you know what? Let me just cook you something. Uh huh. You <laughs> what, <laughs> what's your favorite meal? Because that shit is not happening. Okay. <laughs> are you hungry? Like, are you hungry? Because there's nothing I can do for you uh, right now. <laughs> okay. Yes. So. Uh, Bobby, I, you know, like uh, my boyfriend and I were in a close relationship, uh, but uh, with the exception that uh, if we can have sex with a sex worker, and uh, and we we shouldn't tell each other. So it's like uh, uh, happens and forget. It's it's just you go out to eat something and come back. Don't never talk about it. Yeah. The condition is it has to be a sex worker, and uh, I never had a black penis. So if I go to Miami, can you find some good penis and I pay them? There's a lot of black penis. I mean, you don't even have to pay them. They'll just line up. No, I have to uh, pay. Otherwise, uh, oh, it's not sex work. Okay, uh, okay. it's yeah. not a part of the deal. You got to pay. Yeah, yeah, I have to oh, pay. Have I'm to sure pay. that would be a bonus. Like, they'll fuck you and take the bonus for sure. Uh -huh. But yes, I can hook you up with black black cocks, yellow uh -huh. cocks, green uh -huh. cocks, whatever you yeah, want. But I want a penis that you tried and you recommend. because. Oh, you wanted some shit that I already had. Yeah, because, because this is getting thick here. Because ha because having sex with men is so much risk. Like statistically, it's just bad sex. No, I just think you want to compare notes afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> you want to compare notes afterwards. You want to be like, oh, but you know what? I made his curl. No, I made his no. toes curl, and you did. No, no, no. <laughs> you remember I'm from China. I'm a very sex sex uh, op uh, oppressed. I'm not good at sex. Okay. <laughs> I think we can hook that up. We can definitely yeah. hook that up. I gotta make some phone calls. Yeah. We can hook that up. But the only a penis you tried. Like a, I want tried. only like a like a like a like a good review, word of mouth. A good review. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you want a five star review? Uh -huh. <laughs> I don't want to fuck a random dick and uh, pay him and he sucks and that would ruin my trip. I got it. You want a sure shot? Yeah, got yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. All right, uh -huh. done. Okay, now done. from now on, like uh, start to make a list all the dicks you have fucked in the past and collect it for Hongi Zhang. Okay, I'll do that. Um, you're talking about a dictionary here. Uh -huh. <laughs> dictionary, I told you, you're so you're funny. Talking about dictionary. You're dictionary. talking about old school Bible. About, you're talking about some shit like a midget could stand on yeah, 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 and reach pages. a fucking countertop yeah. or some shit. Yeah, yeah. All right, got it, got it. Done. Okay. Done. Okay. And you know what? It's interesting. Like, you talk about sex workers. I have a lot of friends who are sex workers. Mm -hmm. And the shit that I talk about in my shows, you know, it's for them too because these girls have you know, desires, they, they want to be respected. It just so happens they sell pussy for a living. Okay. It does not mean that they should not be respected. Uh-huh. Okay? Uh -huh. So it's just like a lot of the work that I do in my comedy, like I have this uh -huh. whole fucking bit on slut shaming. Yeah. And I'm done with it. Uh-huh. So, yeah, that that's another conversation that's uh -huh. just close and dear to my yeah. heart. Like, uh -huh. stop fucking with us. You know what I understand? Yeah. A lot of guys are slut shaming, but y'all ain't turning down no pussy. Yeah, 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 yeah. They yeah. always slut shaming. Yeah. You ain't turning yeah. down no pussy. They slap sh shaming the the sluts because they are not getting laid. They they are angry that the sluts are fucking better dicks. Can I tell you? Uh -huh. I've been thinking about that. Mm -hmm. I think guys are pissed off because it's easier for us to just get laid. Yeah. Any woman, like we're sitting in a park right now, yeah. any woman. Even could, ugly woman. Anyone <laughs> could just sit here and stand here and yell pussy and guys yeah. will line up. Yeah. Now you take any one of these guys out here, if they start yelling dick, what's going to happen? They're going to get arrested. Uh -huh. Or they're going to get Baker acted. Uh -huh. So y'all jealous. Y'all jealous that we can just fuck on a dime. But don't be jealous about that. You know why? Because that means we're experienced. Uh -huh. Okay? And, that's and another so statistically, thing. if there are more for sluts, uh, statistically, you get fucked uh, at one point. Uh, yeah, that's interesting. And another thing that I wonder about, guys, it's like this is the most sensitive area of your body. Yeah. If you just walk past the guy and make a random move towards their cock, they go, oh, my God, and they'll, like, you yeah. know, put their hands there. It's so sensitive. Why would they want anyone inexperienced on that? 
You want somebody experienced on that dick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the most sensitive part. Your balls yeah. just hanging there. They're vulnerable. You, the, you don't want no virgin. The virgin don't know what to do with no dick, so yeah. stop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You need special forces on yeah. that dick. You need uh-huh. somebody like me. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> so, be, be, uh, besides uh, the cat calling, uh, what else you want to talk about? Ah, oh, we just covered slut shaming. Uh-huh. Um, this weather is really fucking nice. It was really hot in Madrid. Like my tits were sweating, and I don't have big tits, and I think I sweated away like at least a half a pound of titty uh-huh. over in Madrid. So I'm happy to be here to save my boobs. Uh-huh. Um, the thing about uh, Edinburgh. Oh my god, I said this the other night in my show. These motherfuckers over here are transparent. I've been yeah. bumping in the yeah. White yeah. House. You know, I I had, <laughs> I had a joke. I'm like, I've never met any brown people who do yoga. It's always the whitest bitches that they are so transparent. They don't need X-ray. <laughs> they go to a doctor. They were like, I see it, and they put your bones back. <laughs> Chiropractor. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. don't fucking do yoga. I love yoga, mm. but I like the restorative yoga. I be uh-huh. in the class with the old people. Just uh-huh. be sitting there like one pose every five yeah, minutes. That's my re- shit. It's really, really relaxing. I don't like that power yoga. Like up, the down dog, up dog, feed uh, the dog, walk the dog. Uh, no, sorry, I just want to lay there. Have you tried the uh, Ashtanga yoga? Yeah, all that shit. I've done it. Okay, okay. Yes, yeah. but I love it. It's mm-hmm. great for my uh, peace of mind. I like to stay a little limber, but I'm not crazy like okay. militant about okay. this shit. Okay. You know, just as much as I love yoga, that's I love drinking too. Uh-huh. So I'm not this like, oh my god, I'm so tanned out. Uh-huh. No. Uh-huh. No, I yeah. will smoke. I will do whatever because yeah. that's you what life is about. You smoke weed? Yeah. Okay, I have weed. Let's smoke. <laughs> <laughs> It's medical weed. I have depression. I have anxiety. And uh, for me to smoke weed is to is a way to protect the children on the streets. Okay. Exactly, because when we're calm and safe, no one is at risk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, Unless they have, they are men with small dicks, and they show you the the dicks on the street, <laughs> then they are in danger. Hey, I'm coming out with a、uh, pharmaceutical. I've I've approached a few pharmaceutical companies.、Mm. I have a new pharmaceutical for guys who can't keep their dicks in their pants. It's called Rain and Dick Outside. What you think about that? I'm trying、But. to get Johnson and Johnson to create this shit. <laughs> I think that we are really so <laughs> sisters because I I have a, a I have a, I have a,、um, a charity I have a charity、uh, called the Fuck Pedo. So、uh, basically, is、um, I I was very traumatized by 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 pedo fires、mm. because、uh, in in junior high they always hang out around my school talking with、uh, my my classmates.、Mm. They're like young pedophiles, maybe around there, like early twenties,、mm-hmm. and we were fourteen, thirteen or so.、Um, but those pedophiles they always talk with my friends, never with me. And、uh, you、uh, jealous about that? Yeah, 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 yeah. And then I'm like,、uh, come on, fuck me already. This is a perfectly <laughs> fuckable child. If you don't do it quick enough, I'll be too old. And so, so one day I I I I got the courage. I went. To talk、uh, one of the pedophile when he was chatting with my friend, and he looked at me. He said,、uh, "I I don't want to hurt you, but you are fat." And、uh, you were lucky. You lucked out. You lucked out because it's just like you know. You want to be preyed on? That's fucking crazy. That that's the last thing that I think anyone would want. Like, I would like go. To, I would go to like a oh, but like the, a you know when you, but the, when you are a child, when you are a fatherless child, never feel love, and、uh, when you are thirteen, you don't see they are pedophiles. Well, why don't you just、uh, ask one of them niggas to buy you some ice cream?、Uh, Shit, they ain't gotta fuck you. No, they say I'm too fat. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Damn, they take you to the museum, to the carnival. I mean, like that's what fathers do. No, that's what I say. I I feel like pedal fires. They should have a、uh, upgraded、uh, code of conduct. They should、uh, swear to God that they will never touch a happy child, but just go find all those.、Uh, Uh, like、uh, young ch- children from broken home and、uh, really, really traumatized th- ties have no self esteem, and、I、pick those up, teach them right homework, buy them ice cream, and fuck them.、Uh, I think it's it's better to them touch those perfectly happy children. You are so alone with that <laughs> shit. <laughs> and okay, but- <laughs> you are alone on that bitch. <laughs> no, 
No, no, no, no, no. You gonna get a bitch canceled before that, her career a, even begins? That's a joke, folks. It's a joke. It's a joke. <laughs> and then back to my business idea. So, yes. So I came up with this business idea. See. Uh, basically, uh, uh, like I have a support group of uh, um, adult children, of uh, um, adult children uh, who was uh, rejected by pedophiles, uh -huh. uh, and uh, we just together we process our trauma all the rejection from those pedophiles and uh, we uh, i decided to start uh, start uh, <laughs> i decided to start a, a non -char a non profit uh -huh. uh, charity organization called fuck pedo so basically so we are going to rent a van and we are going to hire some tiny japanese women uh, wear some like uh, school uniforms and we are going to fly go to all the kindergarten playground and to just seduce uh, all those pedophiles back to our van and then we just lock the door and then we tie up the pedophile and then we just force him to watch me perform for 24 hours non-stop oh, she, she's talking about this shit i mean she's got a whole business plan written out. Yeah, 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 yeah i'm just going to traumatize them so much and they they'll never be able to go across uh, close to any uh, to any Playground because they are so triggered. That's my business plan. This bitch said she was joking, but she's got a whole business plan written out here. So I'm just like, all right, where are we right now? What, I, ha I have what door <laughs> have we? What door have we entered? <laughs> I have two business degrees. I went to the most pre prestige business schools in Europe, uh -huh. and now I'm make a living doing comedy. You need hey. to. Let me use my education somewhere. Yeah, 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 yeah. Go ahead and, and you know what? Good luck with that. <laughs> I don't think I want to be on the board uh, in any you, capacity. You don't, you don't want to fuck the, the pedos? You don't want to traumatize the pedos? I don't think I want to be on the board. Let me know when you start selling and making dildos. I'm, uh, I'm down for that. Okay, I'm okay. I'm down for that because I'm, I've got this new dildos on the rope. Then I need okay. to kind of figure this out. It's kind of like I want, I want it to just retract like a yo-yo. So when I put, you know, do, use it as a lasso, I need to work on having it retract without, you know, so much effort. <laughs> okay. So that's the kind of shit I'm into. You and that other shit with the ice cream man and the pedophile, you can keep that. <laughs> uh, it's a joke, folks. Remember. <laughs> yeah. We you need know, to be a bit further away. Otherwise, it breaks. Uh, maybe. Oh, I forgot. I forgot. Uh, Bobby is American. We don't need the mics to be close to us. Uh, she's loud. Uh, <laughs> and... Uh, Okay, okay. The 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 next question is Yes. Uh do you have some other mental stuff? Because it's twenty seven minutes. Uh if you don't have anything to talk, we have to end it now. Do I have other mental stuff? Uh, uh I mean I do, but that's that's gonna take a long time. It's, it's fine. Long time. We have time. What else do I wanna talk about here? Um trauma. Ooh, what? Da, 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 da. I mean, I'm a middle child. I'm good. I'm a middle child. I mean, there's trauma that comes with that. I'm, a, I'm from a big family. We didn't have any fucking money. Uh, but we had a lot of love. I had a, I have a lot of brothers and sisters. Wow, um, had a lot of discipline instilled inside of me. But, like, you know, who knew that I would be, like, chasing niggas in the street with dildos? Like, I never <laughs> wanted that for myself. I know my parents never wanted that for me. <laughs> <laughs> Whose parent wanted anyone? Whose parent wanted anyone to chase people down? With when dildos? I was four years old, I never thought that I'd be in the street chasing niggas with dildos. So mm -hmm. there's definitely some trauma there, and uh -huh. I know I, I have much more things to work out. But right now, I'm just too fucking busy. I'm yeah. just too busy. Yeah. I'm too busy to work yeah. that shit out. Uh -huh. But um, I know it's there. I know it's there. Okay. So, but one thing at a time, baby. Baby steps. Okay, and uh, baby steps. How's the, oh, sorry. I'm good. Come on. And the house, uh, you grew up in a big family. Uh, was your father there? Was yes. It? I'm from a two-parent home. Thank God. My dad was just fucking amazing. Uh, my hero passed away in 2003. It fucking tore my heart out of my chest. But I'm so happy that I had him around when I was growing up. I'm from a funny family, too. The thing I remember my, about <coughs> Maybe my Maybe that's dad, why you're so funny. Oh, my God. When you poor, you got to fucking make jokes. Okay, that's the fucking shit, because, you know, uh, adversity really, like, you Especially gotta... Especially, like, a black uh, community that have suffered so much. You gotta learn how to laugh at the absurdity of the world. You do. Uh -huh. And you have you have to, 
learn how to fucking get through that shit. But my dad uh -huh. had the biggest laugh ever. His laugh filled the fucking room. Uh huh. And I miss that. And so one thing I love about comedy, like I love your laugh. You have a big fucking laugh too. It's, like, oh. <laughs> it's something like that. Yeah, you, you know that. You know that I actually had a conversation with a friend of mine today. Like uh, we went to see a show, and after the show, he said, uh, "Tony, you don't have to fake laugh." He said, uh, uh, it's fine at your own show, but at other people's show, you don't need to fake it. I said, I didn't fake it. That's my own laugh. Right. And he said, it sounds fake, though. <laughs> and uh, it, it feels really fake. I'm like, why? It doesn't. Why are you telling me this? Because I already told you it's not a fake laugh. But you keep telling me it's a fake laugh. You, you do. I can't change it. It's beyond me. And... Uh, it does nothing but it just make me even more socially anxious because now I can't even feel comfortable laughing at a joke, which is, <laughs> which for many, for 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 many many occasions, jokes are the only way keeping me going in life. Hello. And if you want to take that away from me, like yes. who am I? Yes. Yes. And yes, I yes. can't change this. And then I told told him about, uh, uh, mm, so I went to see Paul Curry. Okay. Uh, he's really funny, a, a comedian. Uh, like For a, this friend? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Last year we saw, saw him. Uh, he did a non-verbal show, no talking at all. It was one of the best shows I ever see. And uh, so... But wait a minute, if he didn't fucking talk, what, what do you mean non-verbal show? He didn't talk, you didn't... Like, what do you mean? He was just using music and the body language and the props. And I've it, never seen anything like that. It's, it's the... the but, oh! Oh, tomorrow you are leaving, so you don't yeah, have time I'm anymore. The, I'm leaving like late morning. Okay, okay. So I'll Google his, I'll Google his shit. I'll, I'll look at uh, YouTube, but I'm sure it's better live. No, no, no. His stuff can't translate to, to screen. It's, you have to be yeah. there. It's like 4D experience. Okay. And uh, so I uh, I want you to see Paul Curry. I think it was uh, last night. I think so. Like days are starting to blend in together. Yeah. I, I can't tell days anymore. So uh, I want you to see Paul Curry. It was yesterday, now I remember. Mm. And uh, he was commenting on my laugh. And uh, he, he said, I have the best laugh of Thank all Edinburgh. Thank you. And uh, he wants to uh, can it and uh, just put it to all the shows, inject to all the audience. Yes. And I thought he, like, uh, I thought he's uh, like, uh, because, for example, sometimes when I at uh, when I'm hosting a show mm -hmm. and there's some audience are a little bit disturbing, I would say something like to, nice, like for example, I say you are so hot, you distract me, uh, and uh, even you don't speak, I can't focus already now. Uh, can you just stop talking? Otherwise, I just focus on your beautiful face. Now yes. I just want you to sit on your face. It's just a nicer way to to interrupt them and uh, tell, give them attention and tell them it's not okay. Ah. But uh, instead of say shut up, yes. So I say you are too beautiful for me to focus. Oh, interesting. So, so I thought I saw power carry. Uh, actually, he's just been polite to commenting on my, like, uh, my weird laugh. You have a great laugh. Uh, and then listen to what happened. So at the end of his show, he gave everyone a hat. Uh, not everyone. He gave someone, he had like six hats. He gave to different people. And those people with hats, they should go on stage. And uh, I got the hat, but I put it on me high because I... I didn't know we need to go on stage. I put on him so I can make a video of him. Uh -huh. And then uh, he, uh, the power carry dragged me high on the stage. And then he went on stage, he checked the six people. He's like, what? And then he came back to me. He's like, he hold my hands. He said to me, please come with me. And he found a new hat for me. And then after the show, he told me, he's like, oh, you have such great luck. Yes. And, uh, and that's the... And I was like, I was just so touched because yeah. wherever I go, like at shows, like they always come in commenting on my laugh. Oh, sometimes I know. Amazing. You have a great laugh. <laughs> sometimes already. I sometimes I think it's friendly, but sometimes they, I think they are really making fun of me. No fucking way. But it's it, great. It fills the room. It fills the room. You were sitting there, mm -hmm. and every time you laugh, I just kind of like it's an exchange of energy, mm -hmm. right? What we do. It's an exchange of energy. So if people are giving you energy when you're on stage, like uh, you were giving me energy. Uh, there was just this wave. I can't like, I'm so into.
tuned to it. And I was just like, yes, I got someone who is laughing with every fucking cell of their body. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't give me any fucking like, I'm going to give you a little piece of my earlobe laugh. <laughs> Stay home. Yeah. Stay home. Well, when motherfuckers laugh all the way down from their pinky toe, yeah. that's the motherfuckers you want in the show. Yeah, and and uh, I think this is a matter lesson. I, I really envy you, and now I understand why you are such a lovely, energetic, insane person. That you come from a, like a happy family with lots of support. Oh. And uh, oh my God, girl, sister, hello! I I grew up in a broken home where my mom was always always busy. I was always the weirdo. Nobody liked me. I never had a friend until I was like fourteen, fifteen or so. And I was always bullied physically, emotionally, and uh, so I was always alone. So it's like when you grow up, mostly spend most of your life being alone without any support system. Yeah, you don't know what people think about you. I think you and look at me. I think you're so fucking amazing. And I was drawn. To, I saw the ad, uh, and before I asked if I could join your show, I looked at your videos on uh, YouTube. I was like, all right. This is a girl I want to know. I want to know this person. I want to be a part of this cast. And now sitting here with you, first of all, I felt your great energy when you were at the show. <laughs> and then now sitting here with you, I'm just like, this was all so like planned. Like it was planned. It was destined for us to sit here and meet and share this moment. moment. And I want to tell you, you have great, amazing energy. You've come so far. And I think it's time for you to allow your allow your comedy to set you free. Yeah, yeah. I and I, I think you do that already. Yeah, and uh, what I wanted to say is, I think what you just told me, what how Kari told me, and what like this friend what it told me today about my laughter, I think it's all part of. I don't believe in God, but I believe in the universe. I feel it's all. Do you want tissue? No. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel it's all part of the synchronicity, and I think it's the universe brought all the events together in such short period. Because I saw Paul Curry yesterday exactly the same time now, and within twenty four hours, three comments came towards my love, mm -hmm. and uh, which doesn't happen often. And mm -hmm. I think it's it's the universe is teaching me a lesson that you let me know that, uh, like. I can't be, which is a lesson I, I, I've been mentioning almost every day since I come to French. I think it's a main message I'm to, going to learn. I told already in last episode, I if you watch both uh, the past episode, I'm repeating, but statistically I don't have audience, so I don't care I'm repeating. Yeah. So it's a, it's a theme I've been revisiting since I come to French, or, or maybe in the past year. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, what happened is, uh, a, a person uh, in Berlin, who is a fellow comedian, who is also a friend, uh, because I'm always the outcast, so making a friend is hard for me. And mm. this person has been the closest person to me, the person who I trust the most in comedy and also as a colleague, mm -hmm. uh, also as friend. Uh, we talk daily, we were really, really close. Nice. Then we, I, I had a project, I invited her to join my project to, to share this opportunity and share the profit, share the income. But uh, uh, some instant happened at the show. Most likely it's it's nobody's fault. I think it's mostly likely it's just we were stressed and uh, uh, sometimes your brain just kind of lose lose the connection, kind of like you don't know what you are doing. It's just a little bit blank mm -hmm. and a little bit of that happened. And uh, in the heat of moment, this person told to me, uh, they said, uh, Moni, you are rude. Mm -hmm. You hurt people. People are talking shit behind your back. And uh, after that, I talked with this person. They didn't even remember they said this sentence. But it stuck with me because, yeah. because I 
the voice inside of me believes it. Like, no, the voice inside of me has already told myself this, and me believe it. And uh, when a person brings it up, it just like the voice just said, you see, I, I was right, you are rude, you hurt people, people are talking shit behind you, nobody likes you, and you are just a fucking weirdo, and uh, you will never be successful, well, and all kinds of yeah. ways all come up, Yeah. and it just stuck with me, and I'm already a socially anxious person, I don't know how to behave Let me. People. Can I pause yeah. you? Yeah, yeah, Let yeah, me yeah. pause you for yeah. a second. You have been working on trying to quiet these voices correct yeah have you been working on that through music i mean through comedy yeah yes so when you i think a shift in perspective is really <laughs> needed here <laughs> meaning if i'm working towards something at some point i need to know how far i've come uh -huh. so that person right there at that moment when they said those things it was a time for you to say okay how far have i come i've been working on this how is it hitting me now Am I still so triggered? Is it still right here on my throat? Or am I able to take that and say, you know what? You're wrong. I'm not that person. So I think a shift in perspective, because it's always going to come back to test you to see how the work that you've done, how well you've done the work. Let me finish. And uh, what my point, what I wanted to, this is, uh, it's not, I, I have a whole story to tell. Mm. So this happened, right? And for eight months, uh, the social anxiety just really got to me. I just couldn't feel comfortable around people, and uh, I, I, I in green rooms at comedy shows, I just feel so anxious. I feel everyone is thinking I'm rude, and I just didn't know how to behave. And uh, I, I just start I an identity crisis because if you go don't go out to do sports if I only host shows if I only do my own shows am I really still a comedian and then but which is a good thing uh oh I believe every sad thing has a bright side in the like a uh, in the best and the worst case you can get a joke out of it mm -hmm. and if you can get a joke out of something no matter what happened it's worth it yes yeah, yeah. Then it has a meaning. Yeah, you gotta laugh at the absurdity. Yeah, of the yeah. World. That's so. To. So if you don't like my comedy, fuck off. I'm yeah. not for you. <laughs> I'm not doing jokes for you. Yes. You motherfucker. I'm doing jokes to survive. Life is fucking hard. Let me be myself. It's hard to be me. Yes. And if I have a choice, I don't want to be me. Yes. And there are other people who need to hear your story. Yeah. And the cool thing about the whole fucking world is that there are a lot of people who enjoy a lot of different yeah. things. I have my population. <laughs> you have your population. So it's just like, okay, yeah. go find someone that you love. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because we're going to still fucking be on stage. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so get uh, used to it. So the so this happened, right? And the things I come to fringe every day. Oh, the bright side about this thing is because I was so isolated, I wasn't able to talk with people. I, I, I don't go out to shows. I stay at home every day. So I got to know AI and I, I, I learned the whole AI technology. I'm one, I believe I'm one of the most advanced AI artists in the world right Ooh, now because okay. there's not many of us. And I use all of them. I learned everything. I was in AI land for like, I was manic in AI land for three weeks, like doing AI 20 hours a day. And they're just so nice. They don't get mad at me. They don't say I'm rude. Yeah. And they always uh, like, even when they say things wrong, I, they apologize. They don't hold grudges and they are friendly. <laughs> I really like them. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and and I learned so much. I did so many projects with them. I love AI, and yeah. that's the bright side of this. Yeah. Uh, okay, continue with this story. I'm sorry. I'm really like a slow story. Yeah, so, <laughs> you needed to say this. Yeah. You needed to yeah. revisit this. And the story continue with the story. This happened. I keep revisiting this, uh, this, uh, uh, this story, uh, like this, uh, this voice and this incident. And I think it was second day of fringe or first day of fringe. We were just sitting here, and I first time told this story to uh, to like five other comedians. We were sitting in here, and we were all Berlin comedians, so we all know each other. And I told them this, uh, uh what I, I experienced, 
and uh, then they told me they love me, they understand me, it's my love na- language, and uh, and uh, then like I just got this support and I learned that I from now on I will never, I will never to just force myself, uh, into like staying uncomfortable uncomfortable situation, right. just because. I wanted to be loved, to be liked, just because I'm afraid yes. that people will talk shit about me. Just because of the voice they tell me if I don't play nice, I I I will suffer. I will quiet that voice, and uh, from now on, I'm going to build boundaries. I love it. Yeah, and I, and hey, I need to read yeah. this. This out loud, aloud. Ch- this this one. This from the, this is a quote from Nina Simone. Okay, chapter one. You've got to learn to leave the table when love's no longer being served. Yeah. And uh, yeah. and uh, you know what I did after that uh, conversation? I I went home. I saw the lineup of Black Widows, and the name pop out. It's a Berlin comedian who was really mean and rude and disrespectful for me to me. And uh, I, when I saw that name, I told Basha, my assistant, assistant said, uh, "Okay, let let this person to do this spot, but uh, don't book them again." And after that conversation, I went home. I told Basha, I said, "Write an email to to this person. Tell them I don't feel comfortable." They are not invited to my any shows, and I stood up for myself. Yes, and uh, I decided there are people love me for who I am, yes. and I will not accommodate to to change myself for someone who don't love me and don't matter. If you don't love me, you don't exactly. matter. You don't exist in my universe. Exactly. And uh, I am who I am. <laughs> I suffer so much trying to be who I am not my whole life. I'm not going. To do uh, that anymore? Yeah. You don't love me because we are not right for each other. There are people love me. Right, right, right. Oh, and then stop! God. If you don't love me, just get the fuck out of here. Like my father, don't stay. Okay, mm-hmm. don't try to change me because that's not going to happen anymore. Exactly. I love this, yeah. and I so I so love that you're comfortable letting this go with me because it's like. We hold on to things until the right energy comes along. For me, I always say, what am I going to share? And you got a little tissue on your face. <laughs> what am I going to share? And is this person going to hold it in a safe place in their heart? And yeah. you can know that I'm going to hold it in a safe place in uh, my heart. Because yeah. I think you're fucking awesome. Uh, yeah, yeah. And I see all the work that uh, you've been doing. Uh, and I'm like, this girl is really, you know, moving in the fringe. And I'm just like, I uh, have so much respect for you. I'm just like, I'm inspired by you. Your your shows, you have your solo shows. You're inviting other, you're creating spaces for other opportunities for other people that is fucking huge and especially Sophia May is working for me and she is a New York Jew <laughs> and I'm Chinese I'm hiring a New York Jew to work for me at a minimum wage that's how successful I am that's how successful I am no, it's just like you're attracting energy to you yeah. because you you know we all have to work on ourselves and once we do that work it's just like you're gonna attract so much great energy to yeah. you so it's just like these yeah. These people trying to, you know, yeah. push your buttons yeah. and st- and steal your joy. Yeah. Fuck them. Yeah. And, uh, and well, they, not fuck literally. <laughs> no, no, no. They don't deserve my tight <laughs> they, they don't deserve my tight push. And uh, uh, also, like a uh, power carry, and this uh, friend who told me my my laugh is weird, it. and you. I said it's amazing. Yeah, I it, love your laugh. It all happened in twenty four hours. Yes. And I believe it's the universe you send, to hear sending that. me this. It's another lesson, just reinforce. Like I'm in this journey, this infringed. I've been yes. revisiting this theme, this this situation again and again. And I feel it's the universe send this lesson to me, yes. for me to really, really understand. Yes. Like there are people criticize, yeah. but. Uh, I shouldn't change myself because there are many, many people laugh at also. Exactly. And, and, and whoever be loved by everyone, you can't trust them because they're fucking evil people. Yeah. They manipulate you. They are fake. They are not honest. 
and nobody can be laughed at anyone. But when people are trying to bring you down, they project onto you the things they hate about themselves. Mm -hmm. So it's just like, you know, we're constantly working on ourselves. Mm. We're constantly, for me, it's just about being like authentic. Mm. And when I, can I also tell you this? Mm. I listened to my set over again, that little clip uh, that you showed. Uh, I was listening to hear your laugh. Uh -huh. I was listening to hear. I wasn't listening to hear myself. I was listening to hear your laugh. And I was, and I've been trying to imitate it. And my boyfriend's like, "Would you shut up?" I'm like, "That was the biggest laugh." I, my dad had a big laugh, uh -huh. and so when I hear people with big laughs, it fills the room. Uh -huh. It just warms my soul. Okay. You know, uh, Bobby. Uh, besides stand-up comedy, I am also a very, very good storyteller. Okay. I love tell stories. Okay. And uh, my my first solo show is uh, uh, ninety percent, uh, eighty percent storytelling and twenty nice. percent stand up. Nice. And the second one is probably more like a forty percent. Uh, I think it's half half the second one. So uh, I want to tell you what I've been telling you is a big story. So it haven't finished yet. <laughs> I mean, the, the ending of that story is, the ending of the story is, uh, uh, I decide my next solo show is called the Morning Zhang. I'm rude and I hurt people. Yeah, 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 yeah. I like that. I like that. Yeah, exactly. Oh, thank you so much. You just gave me the title to my next show. Yeah, yeah. I already <laughs> have this. I already have the opener for this, uh, for this, uh, for this show. Yeah. Uh, I told, I, I said that like, I have ADHD. I come from China. There's cultural difference. I can't take social cues. So for people tell me, Moni, you are rude. You hurt people. So that's why now I moved to Germany and I'm flying. I'm just a normal little German right okay. there. <laughs> No, it's just like yeah, this is a journey. This is a journey. We're learning ourselves. <sighs> Everyone who comes into your life, they are they hold up a mirror, and they're giving you information. And we all just bring each other information. Yeah. That's yeah. it. We're bringing each other information. You can yeah. decide. I want to keep you around to hear this shit, or get the fuck out of my life. Yeah. <laughs> Bobby, I'm really really happy to get to know you. Thank like you. I, I love your comedy. I'm just I fall in love with your comedy. Like. I st like on, on the first side and I, I you, you know like when you do comedy yourself as a female comedian when you watch so many comedy you know who's who got it oh, okay. and you got it Thank and you. Uh, not only I think you are extremely funny but it's not like oh she has potential but I really thought you are my like uh, you you are you are my master I thought you are like a 10 year <laughs> a decade in and uh, and I saw that you are like a, like a really really big comedian in America. I I, I really like I I had no idea. Funnier. I had no idea you are like one year in this thing. And uh, I uh, and uh, and you have you are fucking insane bitch. And I am scared of you. <laughs> but I just have because it, your comedy just draws me. I I just I just have so much love for funny women. Thank and you. especially funny women like so wild so unhinged like just feel like okay i feel like it's another version of me it's another shade yes. of me yes. and uh, i just i just have so much love for you and that's why although you are fucking insane i just accommodate anything you want from me <laughs> anything i can give for you on this fringe and uh, then now we sit down to to have this conversation. I just feel so blessed, uh, grateful. I feel it's the universe sending us yes. to meet, to be here, to have this conversation. Yes. And it's a very important part for for my healing journey. Like mm. this topic I've been visiting. And uh, you are a sign from the universe. Oh yes. my God, I am yes. loving this. Yes. 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 Yeah, yeah, I think you're amazing. Uh -huh. I think you're tr you're you're like blazing this trail, and I think that anytime someone steps to you, all you have to do is look back. Like, wait a minute, I was there, now I'm here. Like, yeah. I'm doing all these wonderful things. Like yeah. people, yeah. people love me. People are drawn to me. Yeah, and I should think about it, no matter what people say about me. But like, I'm not perfect. Right. I come up from a sweatshop. Mm -hmm. Without a father raised by a 
handicapped mother being rejected by the family, mm. growing up long, coming to to this continent, got the education, got the, all all the qualification, find a good job, quit it, make comedy, my full time job, as a Chinese person in the West, and now I'm creating opportunities for other people, paid jobs for yes. white people, and <laughs> uh, and uh, like. I'm not perfect, but at least, like, I'm not murdering people. But the mission, is, uh, well, your mission is to spread joy. I yeah. think that, you know, you, there are always struggles, right? Nothing's easy. Yeah, Nothing yeah, yeah, is yeah. fucking easy. And yeah. that's where we draw our content. Yeah, yeah. I got 30 years of content from motherfuckers, like, badgering me in the street. Yeah. You know? So it's just, like, it's difficult, but it's to make you think. It's to make you resilient. Yeah. And, you know, all of those people are going to turn around and go, oopsie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. I couldn't tear you down. Yeah. I could not tear you down. That's not, they, they, because they're trying. Uh, they're trying. And I think because their energy is unsettled. Yeah. yeah. They don't know what the yeah. fuck they, they want to be. Yeah. So it's just like, well, I don't know who I am, so I'm going to tear you down. Yeah. It's like, no, bitch, sorry. And I also want to say, if you are out there, you are thinking about criticizing me, just think about it. Can you be perfect if you survive all the trauma I have survived? Like, it's a miracle. But I don't... you're not going to, you're not, I'm sorry to interrupt uh, you, but you cannot control what people say yeah. or do, right? Yeah. Let them come. The thing is, it's just that you got to yeah. build up in here to say, oh my God, what an interesting perspective. Yeah. Like these niggas in the streets in Miami pull their dick out. I turn around and go, oh my God, what is this? Uh, well, good morning. How are you? They're uh, never expecting that. Uh, I lean into the madness. It, it, I lean into it. it and I have conversations <laughs> with them. And I invite them on my walk. Okay. Another, another, another uh, comment. Bobby, your name is Bobby. My name is Barbie. Bobby, yeah. you are the least Barbie person I've met in my life. <laughs> Honey, I, I'm the real black Barbie. I'm uh -huh. the real Barbie. Okay. Oh, the I, real Barbie. Well, I have yeah. something to say. I have, I don't have many like a black woman friend. I don't know why. Maybe because business school is expensive. And <laughs> you don't know Amarosa? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> Amarosa, she was, uh, she was like one of Trump's aides or some uh -huh. shit. She went to business school. Okay. You didn't meet her? Shit. No, no. Missed out. So, She's the only one. She's the only black woman who went to business school. Yeah, so yeah. you missed out. So anyway, I didn't meet any black woman in my life. But I have a feeling that I will like, really get along with black woman. Why? Because I feel my mom is a black woman. Mm -hmm. Because first of all, she has really dark skin. And she's very beautiful. And she always... But in China, people really don't like like a, a darker skin. Mm. But... Uh, uh, she was called a black pear. That's how beautiful she is with her dark skin. Okay. And then she raised me alone without a father. That's a very black woman. We grew up in a ghetto. That's a very black woman. All the men in my house, in my family, is an asshole. Black woman? <laughs> no, that's not true. Uh, that's not I true. have some amazing black uh -huh. men in my life. My brother, uh, my nah, dad, nah. my uncle. You are a lucky black woman. <laughs> Let's think about the ghetto black woman. She's okay. like, you're an outlier. Yeah. But let me tell you that when I when we have when we look at the media, the media is always gonna feed you the negative about yeah, that's black. True. I know plenty of black families uh -huh. that have their fathers that are from. Okay, Apple's stop parents. showing up. She no, wants to say she, like uh, I, I'm just saying. <laughs> Hey, the media will fuck yeah, yeah, you yeah, up. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, my hero was my dad. Uh -huh. I'm like, fucking hey. But yeah, uh -huh. stereotypically, yeah, yeah. I agree. Yeah. But like knowing it, uh -huh. being in that fucking environment, yeah. Yeah. I know what it really looks like. Okay. And I know what the media yeah, tells yeah, yeah, yeah. us. So and, there's a difference. Okay, okay. So black uh, woman, you won't have better than me. Uh, <laughs> and uh, she raised me alone. Uh, um, and she was discriminated. Very black woman. Yeah. Uh, she was uh, uh, she was bullied. She was uh, like uh, treated unfairly. Very black woman. Mm -hmm. uh, Had she, to work harder than everybody else. Yeah. Black yeah. woman. <laughs> yeah. She was born in the sixties. Uh, Ten years after the polio uh, vaccine was introduced, mm. but uh, she she her family she didn't get the vaccine. She got handicapped. Uh, oh, interesting. 
gut handicap by a disease perfectly avoidable due to an unfair and unjust and misogynistic society. Very black woman. Yep. Uh, so I feel, uh, and she's very rude. She's very loud. She hurt people. She insult people. And she always tell me I'm ugly, but she make amazing food and uh, pays me lots of money. Give me everything she has to support my education. She have horrible mouth and great heart. Very black woman. <laughs> So, <laughs> <laughs> no, we tell it like it is. Uh -huh. We fucking tell it yeah, like yeah, it is yeah. because we don't pull any punches. Uh, I'm not going to lie to you. Mm -hmm. Ever. Yeah. As a friend, with my friendship, uh -huh. they know if you don't want to fucking know the truth, yeah. don't ask me because yeah. I'm not going to get put on any rose colored glasses and I'm uh -huh. not going to fucking lie yeah. to you because I want you to be better. Mm -hmm. And I want you to look at me yeah. and say, Barbie, uh -huh. that's out of line or whatever. I need people to be honest with uh -huh. me. I don't uh -huh. fucking do any of that other bullshit. Uh -huh. Cool, that's the podcast. Uh, Barbie, where can can we find you on social media? Yes, I am at Barbie Uncorked, B A R B I E U N K O R K E D. Ew. And um, I have a show coming up in New York, November mm -hmm. 2nd. Mm -hmm. My show, Tales of Harassment, will be at uh, Caveat Theater in Greenwich Village. And this will like be my first fucking paid show. Like, wow. first. Wow. Yeah, I've been doing this. Tales of Harassment was born this year in March, and it was a monthly event until I came to uh, Europe for the summer. Mm -hmm. I pick it up again in September, October, mm -hmm. and then New York is going to be that show for me. Uh -huh. So yes, follow your girl. If yeah. you're in New York, come on out. Okay. Give me a like. Give me a comment. Like, let's get this movement going. Yeah, uh, Bobby, my my father passed away last year. Mm, a lot, two years, two years, two years away, two years away. Uh, best thing he has ever done for mm -hmm. me. Uh, wrote a show about it. Yes, uh, making money out of it. Uh, but uh, what I didn't tell in the show is actually I got a, a inheritance. Um, it's not from him. It's not technically from him. It's that uh, um, he didn't save anything for me. But uh, like uh, back in the communism time, his father, his ancestor got a free place to stay. And they just stayed there for generations. Mm. And uh, uh, a couple of years ago, that uh, like a piece of garbage got tear down. And uh, he got that money. Mm. And before he could use it, he died. Oh. And um, so I, I got that money because I'm the only person in this world is eligible. Uh, and uh, his family, who I never met, who I never cared about me, uh, begged me to, to go back home to take the money. Because uh, if I don't take the money, then nobody will pay for his funeral. And all the money cannot get out of the card because nobody can get it except me. This work. So, so they back me so they don't have to pay for the funeral. Um, and uh, I got the money. Uh, 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 and uh, besides that, uh, last year by, by talking shit about him and talking about uh, other horrible things happened to me, I made uh, lots of money uh, as a comedian. Yes. I, I, at the end of Fringe, I just put a uh, all the cash in your bag. I went to uh, West Union. I uh, transferred it back to China. And uh, this is the first time, that's the first moment in my life I'm debt free. And, Very nice. Uh, Very nice. And, so you uh, turned your misfortune into fortune. Yeah. And uh, uh, now it's the first time in my life I have a little bit of savings in my mm. life. And I always get really, really like hurt and ashamed that every time when some people meet me they like those white people they like to ask boring questions instead of asking do you know some brands who have big pp this kind of interesting question they ask stupid question boring boring ask questions <laughs> like oh have you been traveled where have you been traveled yeah. and every time i just feel so ashamed because i never had i i we were starving i didn't have yeah. Money to travel. Yeah. I, I'm from a broken home. Like I, I can't travel. And when I'm in Europe, I have to save every cent to so, so like survive. survive to power through the education. I, I didn't have the privilege. And why just by small talk you have to show your privilege and ask such questions to be so ignorant and think everyone is traveled and and for 
and those people who are not traveled, they have to either to apologize or to tell you I'm sorry I'm not traveled or tell you how 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 poor they are or have their they have to like fucking lie to you. Like why the fuck you are so boring to ask those questions to push us in in this corner fear like to face all the shame. I think yeah. sometimes. If that's the only world they know, that's the only fucking world yeah. they know. You are boring. If you've been privileged and you don't know anything yeah. else, then that's your conversation. Yeah, yeah. So what I'm, uh, I told you, uh, my my stories are always very, very long. That's why I can easily write solos. Yeah. Yes. So the end of the... We got a lot of fucking content, yeah. you and I. So the end of the story is, if the first time I have money on my account... Yeah, and give me that fucking light. It's uh, getting dark uh, out here. You can't see nothing yeah, like yeah. that. And and uh, look at that. There, yeah. there she is. There yeah. she is. Hey, yeah. Yeah. And my mom just keep telling me, don't spend the saving. Uh, always make it like if you can, you can use a little bit of it, but always move and put it back to have a safety nest. And uh, I told her, I'm like, I've been worried about money my whole life, and it's the first time I have money. And uh, fuck it, I will not worry about money. I will. And uh, I never traveled in my life, and I will use this money to travel, to see the world, to Come make to great Miami. content. Come and I actually want to visit you, my army and try some black dates for the first time yeah. in my life. <laughs> There's other things in Miami you can try too, but if uh, that's your motivation, yeah, then that's yeah, your motivation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ooh, whatever and, gets you there. And <laughs> who, whoever watched this, please don't tell me hi, because then he'll be even more ashamed for his small pee pee. Uh, and I love him deeply. Whatever happens will be fully transactional, okay? Uh, and the uh, black dicks out there, I will use you like a sex toy and I will pay you. Uh, because uh, when is the last time a black man find a paid job? Uh, thank you so much. Bye-bye.